Welcome to Whiskey Nightcaps, the channel where we have a little sip before we go to bed. I am your host, Jason Davis, and tonight our feature is Balconis True Blue, 100% corn whiskey. Now, this particular distillery was opened in 2008. They're coming out of Waco, Texas. Waco. Yeah. The one thing I like about making purchases like this is that I feel like like I'm doing my part, you know? Like I'm, I'm helping out the small guy. I've done my good deed for the day versus giving my funds to giants, conglomerates, you know, uh, the huge distilleries that have been around and survived prohibition and now they have all of this inventory so they can outprice people uh, like these gentlemen or maybe ladies and gentlemen who probably have a lot higher overhead. Now I've been wanting to try, uh, you know, one of their whiskeys for a while. You know, typically I, I try to buy some type of whiskey that is 100% one grain. And I'll tell you why is because I want to get myself acclimated to the taste, the, the, the flavor profile of that particular grain so that it makes it easier for me to pull that out later on when I'm sipping something like bourbon neat, right? Bourbon is 51% corn, but it also has other grains. Uh, you know, sometimes wheat, sometimes barley, but we know it has rye, right? And so if you single these grains out one by one with some whiskey that's 100% that particular grain and get familiar with that, it helps you to pick out those nuances when you're sipping a bourbon. And that's why I do this. But what I did find out later was that the type of corn that they use for this whiskey is not the same type of corn that is used in mash bills of bourbons or rye. Um, I think it's like a number five corn or something like that. If anybody knows, just go ahead and drop that down below. But this is made of 100% blue corn, the type of corn that you know, like Native Americans would use. And so it's gonna have a different flavor profile than that uh, cheaper to produce dusty corn that we typically get in our other whiskeys. These gentlemen and ladies, maybe, uh, have other lines of this same blue whiskey. So they have this one, which is the true blue, and this is 50%, so it's 100 proof. Uh, they also have a cask strength version of this, and then they have one called Baby Blue, and I wanna try all of these. But they also have single malt whiskeys, and I'm a sucker for American single malt. If you don't know me personally, I love malt. I, that's why I love scotches and Irish whiskey. So if I can get that product made in America and give my dollars to an American distillery, I definitely would do that. And we put our own little different spin on the malted barley than Scotland or Ireland. Um, but yeah, they have a bunch of different lines of whiskey. They may not be readily available where you're from. I actually have never seen this in a dispensary of fine spirits locally. However, I was able to get this from uh, a distributor that uh, distributes liquor to bars, right? And that's how I was able to snag this. Um, but enough talk about that. Let's give it a try and see what happens. I'm tripping. Just get a little bit, we don't get too much. You hear that sound? All right. This might be too much of a nightcap. I have to get up early in the morning, early, early in the morning. But I wanted to get this done for you guys. Definitely, this is, the smell is, is unique. It's, when you put this up to your nasal cavity, you're gonna get a blast of something that is not typical in other whiskeys. It's light and sweet, almost like a Canadian whiskey, but it has a smell like um, a grape, like a, but not a regular grape, like a muscadine grape, 
almost smells like, uh, like, like cognac a little bit. But you can get a little bit of that if you get closer in. A little of that barrel. I like it. Hmm. You know, for some of us, it may be hard for us to pick out those nuances because we have not uh, tried many whiskeys that are 100% blue corn. It's, it's sweet, almost like syrup. You know, the one thing I heard or that I read about corn, um, bourbon is 51% corn, and so the more corn in the mash Bill, people say the corn itself makes that whiskey sweeter, which it did make sense to me. But then I read something that says that it's, it's not the flavor of the corn that you're tasting, but the more corn there is in the mash bill, it allows more of the sugars from the barrel to impart flavors into the whiskey. Enough talk. Let's go in. Mm. Yes, yes. And you know, sometimes what you get on the nose does not translate to the palate. I don't know if you've ever had that happen, but sometimes you get these different flavors on the nose or these different smells on the nose, but when you go to taste it, none of those things are there or one thing, you know, dominates all the other profiles. Um, but this tastes exactly like it smells. Everything that I gave you a second ago on the nose directly translates to the palate. However, there is a little bit of like spice there, but not like a rye spice. Uh, I'm assuming this is from the barrel char. It's warming. I can still feel it going down. Let's try another one. This is my nightcap after all. I don't know if there's a particular whiskey you guys like to have before you lay it down for the day. It's consistent, it's almost a little bit sweeter on that second go round. Almost like a cotton candy type of sweetness. <clears throat> mm. I mean, overall, I will say that this is a good whiskey. However, what I don't know, I don't know if I could make this an everyday, right? Probably not, but for two reasons. One, accessibility, but two, it is so different. I don't know if I would want to drink like huge glasses of this. I don't know if you've ever had a whiskey where the more you drink, it kind of builds up on your palate, like the flavor just kind of like piles up on top of, your, of itself to the point where it's, it's it's not enjoyable at that point. You know, it's like, I've had some brandies like that where the flavor just kind of like sticks to your tongue and just builds layers and now it's too sweet. Um, but however, this is something I would still like to have in my ever rotating collection of whiskeys because sometimes you, you want something different. You want to pull away from the things that you have all the time you know that's the beauty of whiskey to me is that there are so many different ones out there to try and that's why almost damn near every friday i bring something new home 
to experiment with because I like that variety. I like that diversity. Yeah, I, I would give this another shot. Um, if this ran out, yeah, I, I would buy another one and have it, but most likely when this does run out, I will replace this with the cask strength version of this. I really want to try that. I really want to try that with no water and just see the difference. Like I'm, I'm thinking at 50% and the flavors that I'm getting, you know, how much more pronounced and how much more better those would be at a higher proof. Yeah. Anyway, I thank you guys for hanging out with me before bed and getting our nightcaps in. Uh, please make sure to subscribe. Give this video the thumbs up. Hit that subscribe or that, that, that notification bell so that you can be notified when I do review uh, new whiskeys. And then I do have some other videos, another playlist of videos called Whiskey Chat, but it'll be on the same channel that is coming soon. Um, if there's anything that you want me to discuss or if there's any whiskeys you want to know if I already have available to review on the channel, please let me know and I will make that happen for you guys. Peace. Get something in your glass for tonight. Whiskey nightcaps out. Good night.